The week is off to a running start. As election 2016 barrels along, President Obama met with Cuban President Raul Castro today in Cuba. A historic event, but also one that has upset many Cuban Americans and others. On the campaign trail, candidate Trump speaks tonight in Washington at the American-Israeli Public Affairs Committee and is facing an expected protest by some of the most prominent Jewish leaders in our country. And back here in New York, our primary is less than a month away. Usually that means that the presidential nominee of each party has been locked up by now, but not this year. With a drawn-out Republican presidential contest and establishment leaders continuing to plot to stop the Trump juggernaut, New York's 95 Republican delegates could play a pivotal role. But New Yorkers are not waiting to be heard until April. On Saturday, hundreds of anti-Trump protesters gathered in Manhattan, marching from Columbus Circle to Trump Tower on Fifth Avenue, while chanting slogans accusing him of racism and sexism. There were similar demonstrations in Phoenix as protesters formed a human wall, blocking a highway leading to a Trump rally ahead of the Arizona primary there tomorrow. So, where do things stand right now? On the Republican side, Trump leads Ted Cruz by more than 200 delegates and Ohio Governor John Kasich by over 500. Despite that, Kasich's optimism has been renewed after a victory in his home state last week. Nobody's going to have the delegates they need going to the convention. Everyone will fall short. And the convention, by the way, is an extension of the political process. So what will happen is people will go there with a certain number of delegates. We will go into Cleveland with momentum. And then the delegates are going to consider two things. Number one, who can win in the fall? And I'm the only one that can. That's what the polls indicate. And number two, John, a really crazy consideration. Like, who could actually be president of the United States? On the Democratic side, Hillary Clinton has widened her lead over Bernie Sanders, sweeping the Midwest and closing in on the Democratic nomination. And joining me now to help us put it all in perspective is our political panel, Adele Malpass, the chairwoman of the Manhattan Republican Party, and Ellis Hennigan, columnist and political analyst. Welcome, both of you. Hey, nice to be here. So Ellis, is Governor Kasich right? Will there be a brokered convention, or is that wishful thinking? Uh, it's certainly possible. I, I mean, predictions this year are very dangerous, no matter, no matter what <laughs> yeah, you yeah. make. Right. But boy, it, it makes you spin out in your head all of these scenarios. And, and listen, as long as you don't care about the future of your country, it's all tremendously fun, <laughs> right? I mean, we've never had that this kind caveat. of uproar. Anything is possible. Mm -hmm. it, it could be any of these three guys. It could be, it could be someone who hasn't even been mentioned yet. It's just, a, it's, it's uproar that is likely to be part of our lives for a couple of months to come. Adele, you agree? Uh, I think it's not going to be a brokered convention. I'm hoping that we have what I would call a unity ticket. Uh, Donald Trump needs to, uh, he needs delegates, and you have Kasich and Cruz and Rubio. They all have delegates, and he claims to be the, the, deal, the, maker. the deal maker. The art of the deal is his thing, so let's see his talents. And I think it would be great for the party to end the primary process, to stop the infighting, the bickering. The tone of it has been terrible, and I think it would be great to unify the party. He could make John Kasich his vice president president. He could make Rubio secretary of state. He could make Cruz the Supreme Court nominee. <laughs> I have it all worked out. You well, so you've heard there it here. Go. If that there happens, we know that and, he uh, watches Metro Focus. <laughs> uh, now, for months now, as you just, just alluded to, the so-called leaders of the establishment have been trying to stop him to the point where last week in the New York Times said that they are going to run. Some of them are considering running a third party candidate against him. Is that going to happen? I think this is why he needs to pull together a deal, because I don't think he, the way it's going now, I don't think he's going to get to the convention with 1237, the number of delegates know, he needs. Does he deserve to be the Republican leader? I, I mean, look, the, you, at some point you have to say, look at what the voters are saying. And that is what the establishment uh, in Washington at, need to accept, that uh, part of this is that there hasn't been a lot of results from the Republican Congress, and people are mad, and people, we've had eight years of stagnant but, but Adele, growth, but, but me, and look at, the, look at, there's anger actually on both sides. But let me quote you to you. Oh, no. Mr. Trump right has made yeah. many statements about immigrants, Muslims, women, and other topics which are diametrically opposed to the principles of the Republican Party. This is not what the Republican Party stands for or the values of the committee, which I chair. That's well you. Well said, by the way. Should this <laughs> person, well should this well, person you just described be the Republican's presidential candidate? Look, he is the leader uh, in the delegate count as of yet. He uh, uh, has been able to survive 
unbelievable things. I thought when he made statements about John McCain early in the uh, race, I thought, oh, that's going to be it for him. And it's gone on from, from, you know, multiple things where people really want change. They want an outsider. Mm -hmm. They want someone who can prove to them that it's going to be different. And so at some point, you have to look at that. Uh, I do not yeah. like the tone. I don't think he's pres I, his pres his tone okay. is not presidential enough for me. He he's, okay. you know. Now, uh, Ellis, as I, as I referred to in the introduction, he is speaking at IPAC. IPAC, is that how you pronounce it? APAC. APAC yeah. uh, uh, today, Jewish Gathering, most uh, influential group of leaders. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to, many of them are going to boycott him. Some of them are going to walk out. There's already a demonstration that's been planned for outside, all peaceful. When has a presidential candidate met this kind of resistance from, from the Jewish community? Well, it, there's been resistance to previous like presidential candidates. I mean, let's, let, let's be honest about that. But, but it creates a great dilemma. And the one that, that Adele and her folks are, are wrestling with right now is emblematic of something that's, that, that's much larger and affecting millions of Republicans, right? They're all kind of people for political and philosophical reasons who find the Trump nomination very troubling. Mm -hmm. But but what do you do about it? I mean, the guy has been romping his way through the primaries. If you if you pull some kind of maneuver in the convention, which which the rules allow, or you can go ahead and change the rules if you don't like yeah. the way they are now, there's going to be huge uproar across the country. All these folks who voted in these primaries made their choices known. You're gonna you're gonna look at them and say. This guy won far more than anyone else, but we're not going to have him as our nominee. What kind of reaction are you going to get from those what people? What kind of reaction are we going to get, Adele? I mean, is uh, there going to be violence, riots on the street that he has predicted if he doesn't get it? Or, and with the, or with the violence that we've seen continue or, or escalate if he does get the nominee? I think he needs to, if he wants to be our nominee, I think he needs to pull off this deal because I think going into <laughs> it, I, I know Good because luck. I think going into the convention is a risk for him. He is an outsider to that group. I think that group is naturally going to gravitate to more like a Kasich type. And uh, I think, you know, Kasich is going to, is hoping that for this brokered convention concept where he knows more of the inside players. And, uh, but uh, I think uh, he's going to pull off a deal. I think he's going to get K6 delegates by making him vice president. So quickly, what uh, what uh, primaries are, are still to be had that are relevant? There's, uh, well, you know, there's uh, tomorrow is going to be Utah and Arizona, and then there's Wisconsin the following week, and then it's New York's three. 95 delegates, yeah. and uh, then we should after, be looking at those. Yeah, right, and and California and on. I mean, this they're is all. Uh, then the next week, the 26th of uh, April is a big Super Tuesday for the Northeast, and that includes yeah. many of the Northeast yeah. states. Um, um, Ellis on the Democratic side. Sure. Last week, um, Hillary swept mm -hmm. the the Midwest, and she wasn't supposed to. She did. Is it over there on that side? Of um, the I, it's kind of over, but there's still a lot of a lot of careful maneuvering that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Let me let me see if I can sketch it out for you. If if we assume, and the evidence suggested that Hillary is going to end up being the nominee, how that plays out in terms of Sanders and his supporters is crucially important, right? Mm -hmm. One of the advantages Democrats have over Republicans this year is those guys are are, are going nuts. And the Dems are having, a, frankly, a, a rather grown-up debate about, about issues. But, but notice how careful Hillary is about uh, saying whether she thinks Sanders ought to leave the race. The president made also some, some careful and judicious comments about that uh, the other day. You want to make sure that when all is said and done, that the passion and the energy and, and some of the progressive beliefs that those Sanders people have get transferred over to Hillary. You want to make sure those kids, and a lot of them are kids, young voters, that they don't stay home, that they get out and they support Clinton in November. All right, we, we have just about a minute left. I want to move to the question of the trip to Cuba, the present trip to Cuba. He said as late as last December that he wouldn't travel to Cuba unless there had been progress in human rights and civil liberties. There have not been, but he's in Cuba. Right move, wrong move? Well, yeah, it's something he can do, right? Clearly, the last 60 years have not produced really any results, mm -hmm. right? And at some point, you got to say, let's do something different. I don't expect a miracle, but you know what? It's a step in the right direction. Uh, he has gone to Cuba fully uh, to change, to hope that it, uh, uh, it creates a legacy for him in foreign policy where he's had a very weak agenda in the Middle East. Uh, he doesn't care about, he hasn't tried to change the dialogue on human rights, on capitalism, on open markets, on freedom. And it's been a full capitulation of the United <laughs> States. And it is everything uh, that makes uh, voters out there want Donald Trump when he says, I want to make America great okay. again. Because uh, right. it looks pretty weak. Okay. All right, both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. Great to see you.